Thank you all very much for joining. Uh, we're excited to have you here today for today's webinar. And uh, I'm excited to have you as well. Uh, so that we'll get started here in just a minute. Welcome everyone. Today's webinar, Tableau Trek, exploring and using new releases. Thank you so much to Technion for hosting this webinar series, and I'm excited to get started. I am Joshua Milligan. Uh, there's a, a nice picture of me. Uh, I am a principal consultant at Technion Data Solutions, and I love what I do because I get to help clients every day with data. And so every day I'm solving problems, answering questions, and my primary focus is Tableau. So I'm using Tableau Desktop, Tableau Server, Tableau Online, uh, Tableau Prep, and I'm, uh, I'm working with clients to shape their data, analyze their data, visualize it, and it's a lot of fun. Now, a lot of my colleagues at Technion are doing other incredible things like building data warehouses, doing predictive analytics with Data Robot, so that's a lot of fun too. And if you ever need any help with any kind of data uh, or any kind of issues that you're having, definitely reach out to Technion. Uh, there's my contact information and I'd, I'd love to, uh, to have you reach out to me as well. I am a uh, Tableau Zen Master. In fact, I'm a five-time Tableau Zen Master and that's an incredible honor from Tableau uh, and I'm very grateful to them for that. It's uh, it's an honor, but it's also a very humbling experience because the uh, the Zen Masters are just an incredible group of people, and to be counted among them is uh, is an honor. But it's 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 also very humbling as well. Uh, I do have a book, Learning Tableau 2019. Uh, we've got a month left in 2019, uh, so it's it's a uh, it's it's maybe coming to the end. Maybe I'll do a 2020 or a 2021, uh, but it's uh, it's it's a great book for just learning the fundamentals of Tableau as well as progressing on and building a foundation uh, to do some incredible and exciting things. And we'll talk about some of those today uh, with some of the new features and new releases that are out. Uh, there's one of the most exciting things in my life, uh, my four children. Now, this picture is a year old. In fact, it's over a year old now, so the baby there is almost walking. Uh, the two-year-old is uh, now three, and he's uh, almost using the bathroom consistently, which would be great. And the other two are older and uh, maybe a little wiser as well. Now, my wife saw this slide, and she said, why is there no picture of me? And I said, I, I can put one in if you'd like. She said no. <laughs> so, what am I supposed to do? Well, when I was uh, when I was the age of maybe the two uh, older kids there, I used to watch Star Trek, the original series, and it was in reruns at the time. But I didn't know it was reruns. To me, it was all new. It was exciting. Every week, a new alien, a new civilization to explore. And there was a sense of wonder and, uh, and, and exploration that has stayed with me ever since. Now, I've grown up and I, uh, I still love Star Trek, but I also have found that same sense of wonder and excitement when it comes to Tableau. Uh, every time I'm exploring a new data set, there's something new to discover, something new to explore. Uh, and every time I download a new version of Tableau or Tableau Prep, there are new features to explore. And so it's a lot of fun and it's incredibly exciting. In fact, uh, I, I kind of think that if there was a television series that covered Tableau, the opening might be something like this. Tableau, 
the final frontier. These are the voyages of the data analyst. The ongoing mission to seek out new features and new functionality. To boldly go where no analyst has gone before. So here's what we're going to do in today's webinar. We're going to uh, look at several different things. We're going to talk about finding the new features in new releases of Tableau and Tableau Prep. You know, how do you learn about those new features? We'll cover that. We'll also boldly explore some of the new features that uh, some of them are out, some of them are soon to be out, and we'll take a look at those. And then we'll talk briefly about what to do with our discoveries. So let's start by finding some new features. Where do you look? Well, there are several places that you might look. Uh, one is on the new features page. So all of these links will also be available to you uh, on my blog. I've got a post out there with uh, these slides, so don't worry about trying to capture them. Uh, in addition, this webinar will be recorded and hosted on Technion's website. And since you've registered, you'll receive an email telling you where to find it as well. But the new features page is an incredible resource for you. Every time Tableau releases a new version of the product, you can go to this page and see what's new. It's great because there are screenshots, there are descriptions, and all the major features are covered. Now, occasionally there are features that slip through that, uh, that you'll discover in other ways, uh, but, uh, but most of the major ones will be here. There are some other places, release notes. So this is a great resource for you. Uh, you'll notice here on the left, you can select uh, any of Tableau's products. Uh, so this is an older screenshot because I only see prep, server, online, and bridge. There is uh, now the new data management studio. Uh, there's, there's all kinds of things, ask data. Uh, is also there now. And so you select which product you're interested in learning about, and then you can select the version number all the way down to the minor release, and you can see when they were released. Uh, it will cover bug fixes, it will cover new features. This is great for me as a consultant because I'm working with clients who are on all kinds of different versions of Tableau. And so if I'm trying to remember, well, when, when we're, uh, when were parameter actions released or when were set actions released? Can I use that for this client? Well, I can go here and double check. Uh, so this is a great resource. Now you might think reading uh, release notes is kind of boring, but try to be like Scotty. Also, you may think I, uh, I, I uh, don't even know how to keep up with features that are going to come out. Well, this is a great uh, program, the pre-release program. If you're a customer of Tableau, this is open to you. You'll have to sign up, but once you do, you'll receive invitations to preview upcoming releases of Tableau. So, so beta versions, potentially even an alpha release or two. And this is a great way to discover some of the features that the developers are currently working on and to be able to sort of get in on the ground floor and, and let the developers know how those features are working for you or if there's any changes that you'd like to see before the uh, product is released. Also, the community forums is a great place. Here, there's all kinds of information about uh, about new releases. I started on the forums just as a way of getting questions answered, and then I thought, well, I'll I'll, uh, I'll help other people and uh, and started to answer questions. But there are also places on the forums that uh, cover the new releases of Tableau and what features are available. 
some other ways that you might consider keeping up on new features. Social media is a great place. So I follow a lot of people on, on Twitter, including some of the Tableau developers. And in fact, there was a new feature uh, a couple versions back, uh, the ability to do a geospatial join uh, between any two sets of data. So you have an Excel document and a SQL Server uh, database. Uh, well, Excel doesn't have any built-in geospatial features. Well, it turns out uh, there are a couple of geospatial functions in Tableau that you can use to join things geospatially. I learned that uh, from uh, Kent Martins, and, uh, and when I saw that, I uh, tried it out, and then I wrote a blog post about it. So blog posts are another great place uh, to learn because there are people, lots of people out there who are excited about new features and are constantly blogging about what they've been able to do with those features. And you can just download a new version and start exploring the features. Uh, that seems a little bit intuitive, but then I know that some of you are thinking, well, at my organization, we're still running Tableau 2018.2 or something way back there. And you wish you had a new version, but it hasn't come quite yet. Well, here is a really cool thing that I learned from Tableau. So always check with your Tableau rep uh, about license issues, but this is official from Tableau. Uh, the question is, is, can I use my desktop license to install Tableau Desktop on a second computer? And the answer is yes. You can have Tableau installed on your work computer and you can install it using the same license key on your home computer because the license is per user. So that means that you might be a version or two behind at work, but at home you can be up to date, learning the new features and then teaching your colleagues or maybe making them jealous by the new things that you know and can do that they wish they could but they can too, because this applies to everyone. All right, enough about how to learn about the new features. Let's actually look at some, and we'll do that through a scenario or two, but hopefully not the no-win kind. Let's talk about some of these features. Let's start with this one, animation. So, the developers got up on stage at Tableau Conference and wowed the audience with animation. It's currently in pre-release. Uh, in fact, I opened up my pre-release version and it said, this will expire in four days. So I'm glad, glad we're doing the webinar today and not next week. But it's currently in pre-release. And here's what it looks like. Actually, first, here's what it does not look like. So this is not animation. Uh, you'll see here I'm trying to track three starships uh, on my scatter plot. I'm uh, I'm looking at the phaser charge versus the shield efficiency, and as the star date changes, the dots are just jumping around. Uh, now you'll think, is this practical? Do I do I even care about starships? Well, first of all, you should care because Star Trek is always relevant, but if it helps you to think of this in terms of profit ratios or employee efficiency or something like that, uh, then think of it that way as well. This is not animation. Everything's just jumping around, and this is fine. This is the way Tableau has worked all the way up until now, but imagine that it instead looked like this. This is what animation is going to look like in an upcoming version of Tableau. Notice that the dots are no longer just jumping around, but now I can actually see where they were, where they moved to, how far they moved. And there's a lot of information that I'm gaining just from the animation, just from seeing a smooth movement of the marks. And it's not just scatter plots. This applies to almost every visualization type. I think pie chart's the only one that's not animated. But consider a line chart. Wouldn't it be cool as you filtered that line chart to be able to see the shape of the line change? And so here it is, changing 
and and it's it's really neat because right now I could change a filter and instantly see that line sort of jump into a new shape, but now I can see how did different parts of the line move? How far did they move? There's a lot of information that's being communicated that I don't even have to think about. So it's one of those really cool features that uh, that just works and offers a lot without me even having to think about using it. But it's also one of those features that completely changes the game in how we can tell stories with the data. So let's take a look at an actual example, and we'll build this right here. I'm gonna use this data set. So I've got a data set that has all the Star Trek deaths in the original series, all the ones that happened on screen at least. I've got the uh, the name, the position, season and episode, uh, shirt color, which could be very interesting, and the, the cause of death. And my goal with this is to build a bar chart race. Now, I didn't know what a bar chart race was, but somebody asked, did you ever see one? And I, I typed it in and saw something on YouTube. Now my YouTube channel is full of these things, but you get to watch the bars change, you know, maybe over time, the, the, most, uh, the most popular operating system uh, starting in 1985. And, and then, you know, it was Linux and now it's Windows and, you know, it's Windows 95. And then, so it's, it's really kind of cool. And you watch the bars change. Well, let's build one with this particular data set. And let's do it right here. In fact, let's get rid of everything. So the only thing I've done uh, to start is just to do some formatting. Uh, and uh, and then from there, we'll build this out. I'm gonna start by taking the uh, the episode title and I'm gonna place that on pages. Now we've often talked about pages being the way to animate something in Tableau, uh, but now we'll truly have some smooth animation built in with the, uh, the pages shelf. So you'll notice that gives me the pages control and I can, uh, I can sort of scroll through uh, each uh, each episode of the original series of Star Trek. I've got it built in here to the title so it will show up and we can we can watch that as it goes. Uh, then I'm gonna build out a bar chart and I'm gonna start by just saying, you know, the running number of deaths, uh, which will be interesting to see. And then I'm gonna place the, uh, the short color, the uniform color on color itself. We're gonna get everything sort of nicely here. And I've, I've always heard that red shirts are the most dangerous to wear on the original series, but we'll see if that's true. And then to make it a, uh, an actual bar chart, I'm, I would normally take that shirt color and drop it on rows. But if I want the bars to reorder themselves, uh, then because I'm using pages, uh, that, will, that normally will tell Tableau keep the bars in order uh, based on all the data. Uh, but what I'm going to do, is I'm going to create a unique rank, yeah, rank unique, um, and we'll do the running number of deaths. So unique rank of the sum of the running number of deaths. Doesn't like that, why not? Oh, let's get rid of, all right, let's try again. Rank unique, sum, running number of deaths. There we go. And I think that'll work, except that I do want to do a couple of things. I want to compute using shirt color so that it's the ranked, it's ranking the shirt colors. And I want to make it discrete so that it's actually creating a header uh, there. And I'll hide this and now as I scroll through the episode titles we'll actually see those bars and uh, and we'll watch it as it goes. I'm going to uh, switch over to a dashboard that I already had built out with another view alongside of it because you can you can uh, synchronize that pages control with other views as well so I can animate an entire dashboard and uh, let's see how this goes.
We're into season two now. And I was worried about wearing a gold uniform, but it turns out that it really is true, especially if you're in the latter half of season two or into season three, definitely don't wear your red shirt if you're appearing on, a, uh, on an episode of Star Trek. So that's animation, currently in pre-release. Uh, there's no official release date yet, and Tableau typically doesn't commit to a release date of features that they've previewed, uh, but it, I would guess it's getting close. Let's, uh, let's turn our focus to Tableau Prep. So I love using Tableau Prep. It's got that same intuitive, hands-on, the data feel that Tableau Desktop does, but it's primarily geared towards cleansing and shaping the data. So there are a lot of new features that come out. In fact, Tableau Prep is on a monthly release cycle. So there are constantly new features. The ability to connect to cloud files uh, is a great feature. Uh, I love that one. Uh, R and Python scripts. Now this opens up a, an entire world of, of possibilities. This one was released uh, a little bit ago, uh, 2019.3, so third quarter. Uh, all kinds of things you can do with R and Python. Uh, you can do predictive analytics. So is it really true that red shirts die most often? Well, maybe that's just because there were more people wearing red shirts on the enterprise just all together. But I could use a Python script to do some true predictive analytics and uh, make predictions about which cast members may be uh, killed off. And level of detail calcs. Uh, this one is officially in the 2019.4 beta, uh, but it also exists in 2019.3. So you can use it there even though it's not documented. And uh, Tableau moves so quickly that uh, when I prepared this presentation, it was beta, but no longer 2019.4 is out. It is a production release. And so we'll we'll take a look at that today. So Tableau Prep. Let's say you have a data set like this. You have uh, every episode of the original series of Star Trek, and for every episode, you have every actor who appeared in that episode, along with the character that they played. Now, as you're prepping your data, often you'll start to ask questions like this, you'll say, how many episodes did an actor appear in? Uh, now that seems like an easy question to answer, especially with Tableau Desktop, except what if you want to then do some calculations on top of that, and you want to group uh, you know, actors who appeared in one episode or 20 episodes or 50 episodes, uh, and you wanna bucket that up. So that gets to be a little bit harder. What was an actor's first episode? Or when did a character last appear? These types of questions, especially if you wanna structure your data with this sort of information built in in Tableau Prep, uh, this used to be a little bit harder because the old way of doing things, and Tableau Prep's only, only not even two years old yet, so when I say old, that's what I mean. But the old way is that you'd have your input data, and as you built out your flow, you would uh, you would then aggregate it. So maybe I'd, I'd aggregate it number of episodes per actor. And then I would join that back on itself to sort of a self-join on actor to bring back that, 
that aggregation back to the row level of data. So now I could know how many episodes the actor appeared in, uh, but I could have that at the original uh, grain of the data, the original um, uh, level of detail. So, so that was the old way, and you'd build out these triangle structures, and it was kind of fun once you got the hang of it, but then, then you'd have like 30 of them in a flow, and somebody else would look at it and say, what in the world are you doing? And you'd try to document it, but it, it was kind of a mess. Uh, and then finally, you could do some cleanup and calculations on top of that aggregation that you'd done. Well, that's, that's all the old way. There's now a new way. Let's take a look at it. So I've got Tableau Prep here with that particular data set. And I'll show off a few other features as we go. So I've got a, got a start here, and I'm gonna just add a step. Notice, uh, notice this really cool little thing sort of hiding down here. This is your, uh, your thumbnail navigation. So my, my flow is very simple right now, just, uh, just an input step and a clean step and that's showing up here. But when you get a flow that starts to span across the, the monitor, it's nice because now I can drag and scroll and instantly find different locations in the flow. It's got some zoom controls, which is great. Uh, those zoom controls zoom just the flow itself. But here's an actual, here, here's, here's an older feature that's kind of cool that uh, I didn't know existed until recently. But if you hold down on control and press the plus or minus key, you can zoom in and out on the entire application and make everything either larger or smaller. So if you've ever tried to present Tableau Prep on a monitor or a projector, uh, this is great. Or if your eyesight is not as good as it used to be like mine, it's also great because you can zoom in on it. So that's, that's an older feature, but a great one. Uh, some other things that uh, that are kind of cool is if you build out, uh, let's say you did build out that triangle kind of shape, or you've got some aggregation that applies to lots of different data sources, uh, or some calculations that apply to a lot, uh, you can take any number of steps, and you can actually save them to a file or publish them to server, and then in another flow or the same one, you can actually insert them back. Uh, so that's a new feature, the ability to to save pieces of a flow and then insert them into other flows. So that that one's really cool. But let's let's go back to the to the uh, question that we had. I've got uh, I've got the the episodes here. So every episode, every the title of the episode and every actor who appeared in that episode. And I want to know, you know, of these actors, how many of them are regulars? How many of them are recurring or one-time kind of things? So I could build out that triangle structure, do some aggregation, but now I've got the ability to create fixed level of detail calculations. Now in Devs on Stage, they showed how eventually this will even be uh, uh, an incredible visual interface, but for now it works just like Tableau Desktop. I just create a calculated field, number of episodes per actor, and then, just like I would in Tableau Desktop, I'm going to uh, use the curly brace and create the fixed level of detail calculation. I'll do it per actor. And I'll do a distinct count of episode titles, just because there could be actors who appeared more than once in a single episode, maybe playing, uh, two or three different characters doesn't happen often, but it could. So this way, I'll know I'll know for each actor how many episodes did they actually appear in, not double counting them. And I'll save that. Now I've got the number of episodes per actor, and if I look at a detail view of that, I notice that there are a lot of actors who showed up just one time. Uh, maybe they. Maybe they loved Star Trek, but they just weren't invited back. Maybe they hated it, who knows. Uh, maybe their agent just didn't quite get what this television series was about. At the other end of the spectrum, I have one actor, lots of records, because this single actor appeared in every episode of Star Trek, and that is Leonard Nimoy, who, uh, who played Mr. Spock. 
Now, you may wonder, well, what about Captain Kirk? Well, Captain Kirk, uh, William Shatner, he showed up in 79 episodes because this first one, the pilot, the cage, was an all different cast except for Leonard Nimoy. He is the only actor to have showed up in every episode, but William Shatner does show up in every other episode. And then there are others. Uh, Dr. McCoy shows up in 76 episodes. Michelle Nichols shows up uh, in 70 and so on. So we could go back. Now, all of this I could have answered very easily in uh, using just an aggregate step or, uh, or in desktop, I could answer that. But what if I wanted to capture all of this and I wanted to turn this into an attribute of the data itself? Well, now I can just create an additional calculated field. And I can start building layers of complexity here in Tableau Prep that will become very simple to use in Tableau Desktop. So let's say I wanted to know what the actor's role was based on the number of episodes that they appeared in. So I'll say, you know, if, if the episodes per actor, if that's just one, then they're a one-time uh, actor. Uh, but if they appeared in... Up, you know, less than five, then that's just an occasional appearance. Uh, if they showed up in as many as 35, let's say, then they're recurring. And if uh, otherwise, we'll call them a regular. So I'm, I'm now building upon this fixed level of detail calculation. And let's see, why doesn't it like this? Expect a different text. Interesting. Oh, well, I guess it would want that then. All right, now it's happy. And I'll save it. And there is the actor role, and I can see that it's it's kind of an interesting distribution of my occasional actors, and they can see some characters who kind of show up maybe every so often, Klingons and the like. Uh, One-time actors, uh, very interesting. Uh, but I've got my regular cast, uh, as well as some people that I didn't expect maybe. Uh, Bill Blackburn played Lieutenant Hadley, and a few other assorted, uh, characters along the way. Uh, but I'll also find some of the regulars that I know and love so well. So I could I could continue building on this. I could ask other questions. Uh, I could find the first time a character appeared, the last time, how many episodes they appeared, and I could build out an entire data set ready for visualization in Tableau. Uh, and I'm doing it all in one step. So no more of these triangle flows with self joins and really complex. It's all done right here in one step. One final thing that I'm going to do with this uh, data set, I, I noticed the episode title is all capital case, uh, which is okay, but I would like it to be title case. I'm going to pull that over here to the left so that we can see it a little bit better and maybe even expand it a little bit more. So I'd like it to be title case, that is every word with a capital letter at the beginning, unless it's one of these uh, words like of or the, um, those do not get capitalized unless it's at the very beginning. So that's like a like the letter A, the word A at the beginning should be capitalized. Now that's a very complex type of calculation. I might be able to figure it out with some of the string functions and regular expressions and uh, but it's it's going to be really complex. However, I was able to find a really cool Python script online that that did it, and uh, and so I could take that and use something like that because now I've got the ability to add scripts right here in a Tableau Prep flow. So this is a relatively new feature, uh, but it works like this. I I add a script, and I can either use R or Python. Uh, I, I'm not an expert in either, but I know Python a little bit better. Uh, so I'm going to connect to my Python server. 
Uh, it's it's a, a tab pi. There are instructions from Tableau on how to connect. Uh, so server name, port, uh, or not just how to connect, but how to install it, how to get it up and running. Uh, but you can run it locally. You can run it on another machine, another server. Uh, especially if you're doing this in an enterprise environment, you'd want to do that. And so once I've connected, then I'm going to browse to my actual script file. And so here's my Python script.py, very um, exciting name there. But the uh, the script itself, we won't spend a lot of time looking at it, but just to show, uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to call this function to title case. It's going to take in the uh, the data set as a data frame object, and I'm going to take uh, the uh, the episode title column and apply this function down here, title case, to every value. So it's going to look at words that are exceptions. Uh, it's going to loop through every other word, and uh, and if it's not in the exceptions, then it's going to capitalize that first letter and then put it all back together. So. I know Python just enough to follow that. I, I don't. I couldn't have written that on my own, so I found it somewhere online. I don't remember where, uh, and modified it just slightly. So that's the script itself, and I'll uh, I'll select that file. Now the only other thing I need to do is tell Tableau what the function name is, and so that was the two title case. Notice the episode title and watch it. Watch all of these different titles as I press enter onto title case. So it runs the Python script, runs the data through it, and now everything is as I wanted. Uh, every word with a capital letter, except for the exclusion words if they're in the middle of the title. So that worked out really well. Uh, and, and that just barely scratches the surface of what can be done with Python or R. There are all kinds of really cool analytics that you could you could do predictive analytics, geospatial stuff, all, all kind of really cool things. Um, title cases is probably one of the simplest and uh, and most mundane things, but it would help me out a lot as I get through it. There's a great episode, Space Seed. All right, and we'll uh, we'll close out of Tableau Prep for now. But that's that's a few of the new features that have come and are coming to Tableau Prep. Uh, other exciting things that they mentioned at Tableau Conference include ranking and other table calculations to come. So I'm excited to see all is uh, is on its way. All right, one final new feature that we'll talk about uh, in our time today, and that is parameter actions. Now this is actually something that was released way back in the second quarter, so maybe it doesn't seem all that new, but when I saw this, I was incredibly excited. Uh, this feature is a game changer uh, because what it allows you to do is it allows you to take any visualization and use it as the source of a parameter value. So for example, I've got this bar chart of dilithium production per planet, and uh, I can set it up uh, to change a parameter when the user interacts with it. So when they hover over a bar or when they select it or select a menu option from the bar, and it can change the value of a parameter, which is really exciting. So they click on Janus 6 and it changes my planet parameter to have that value. But now they click on XO3 and now that that is the uh, value for the planet parameter. And this is great because I can use parameters everywhere. They work across the entire workbook. I can use them in calculations in any data set in the workbook. And that opens up all kinds of possibilities. I can use them in filters. I can use them in labels and captions and titles and throughout, throughout the viz. Anywhere, in fact, that there's a visual attribute, uh, size, color, shape, uh, location. Uh, I can change that. Uh, based on the value of the calculation that uses the value of the parameter. Uh, and that opens up all kinds of possibilities for things like what if analysis. Uh, what if I wanted to compare all my planets to the selected planet? So I select XO3, which planets are over, which planets are under? What if I set the quota based on that level of production? Uh, and, and I can do all of that based on an interaction with the viz. 
uh, I can move reference lines. Uh, so you click on the planet and it, it adjusts the reference line on the viz or on another viz. Uh, top ends, filters and sets. You can change the size of bins. Uh, you can actually pass the, the name of a measure to a uh, parameter. And so before, if you're using measure names and measure values and you've ever been frustrated that you, can, you couldn't know what uh, measure someone clicked on uh, or what they were interested in or you couldn't do a calculation based on the measure names, uh, this opens up some possibilities there because now you can capture it in a parameter and, uh, and do a calculation. Uh, this one could be interesting. It sounds like something Scotty would do and almost blow up the enterprise, but you could even parameterize your SQL in the data connection and change that based on user interaction uh, in a dashboard. Uh, Requery the data, refresh the dashboard, and, uh, and go in an endless loop. Uh, but there are some really cool things you might be able to do with that. Uh, it, it truly is a game changer. Now, all of this, you could do some incredible business analysis and ask questions about revenue and forecasting and, and quotas and goals. Uh, there, it's, the possibilities are endless. But I saw this feature and I thought, I want to play a game. I wanted to play Minesweeper. And not just play it, I wanted to build it in Tableau. And this is something that I'd wanted to do for a long time, but never could figure out quite how to do it until this feature came. Because I knew I needed three things to build this game. I needed data, but that I could find or create on my own. Uh, that wasn't the problem. But I also needed to be able to trigger an action on the same view. So you click one of these squares here, and if that's the view, it needs to uh, it needs to create an action that that works on itself. And there were some you know kind of crazy hacks that could do that, but nothing nothing really great. But parameter actions can do that because if I capture the value of a parameter and then I use it in that view, yeah, it'll do it. I also needed to keep a history of clicks, so not just a filter action. So I click this top right square, I could filter it out. Uh, no problem. Uh, but then when I clicked another square, the lower left square, uh, it's going to forget that that was the, uh, the old filter. It's just going to keep the new filter. But a parameter, I can keep appending strings, and we'll take a look at it. In fact, I'll give you a high-level overview of how I used parameter actions to create this game. The data itself, that was, that was fairly easy. So I found uh, this guy named Dan Q. Uh, he's got an online... Uh, Minesweeper generator. It generates random boards. I can tell it how many columns, rows, and mines, and then I can take that data and just copy and paste it into Excel or some other data source, but Excel works just fine because I need also a little bit more data to go along with that. I need to uniquely identify each square, so I give it a row and column number, and then I thought, well, I'll, uh, I'll also want to uh, have some you know, multiple boards that uh, that you could play as well. So, so I gave each one a, a different board number. And then I thought there are some interesting dynamics to the game uh, Minesweeper, and that is those green areas. Because if you click one of those green areas, then not just that square needs to be revealed, but actually all of these squares that uh, that are surrounding it. So, so that's what. That's what's really helpful in the game of Minesweepers, when all of a sudden you start to clear out big areas and you can start to figure out where the mines are. So you need to be able to see all of those squares. And I thought, how am I going to uh, generate some data that allows me to relate those squares together? So I just started filling in letters into those squares. So each one of those blank spaces, each one of those regions got its own letter. And then I thought I'd also need to associate the surrounding squares. So I did that, keeping the number, uh, how many mines it was touching, along with the letter. And then every so often, there were these kind of issues where a square should be revealed if you click any of the Cs or if you click any of the Bs. So I accounted for that by, by adding both letters. And there's a, a one dot b dot d. So, so I started to build out this data set, and uh, and it was working pretty well. But it was all 
working well for the way that I would think about data, but not necessarily the way that Tableau needed to think about the data. So I took Tableau Prep, and uh, it turned out to be a fairly simple flow uh, building that out. Uh, all I did was pivot the columns to rows, did a few calculations, and one of the main things was to split the data into a top and a bottom board. And that becomes important because the top is what I want you to see at first and to interact with. So you can click the top squares and then it will start to reveal what's underneath on the bottom layer. Uh, so you can see sort of just splitting out that data and then and then unioning it back together. So hopefully not, not too complex. Until finally we get a data set that looked like this, which is harder for me to read than the Excel was, but something that I could use much more easily in Tableau. And, uh, and you'll see that my idea was that I would start to build out a parameter with these strings that, uh, so you click on one of these squares and it's going to, to, uh, to tell it, hey, anything that, uh, that matches 6.1, you need to, to show the bottom square or anything that matches C, you need to show it and that's how I can clear out all of those C squares. And then finally in Tableau, we can build something like this. And so you select a square and it's going to, uh, to add that to the parameter string and anything that matches that gets filtered out. And so we, skip, and we see the bottom. So there it's only one square. And then you select another square, and uh, and it appends that value to the parameter screen string, and it uh, and it filters that one out, and uh, and you keep going. So now I select a B, and now everything that matches the B uh, gets filtered out. And so you can see that it starts to uh, it keeps a history of everywhere that you've clicked, and it uh, it's calculating what should be shown based on what matches or doesn't match. And so let's take a look at it in Tableau itself. And here's what it looks like. I also just recently published it to Tableau Public. So you can go there and you can download the workbook itself and you can, you can play around with it. You can see how it was built. But here it is uh, sort of working behind the scenes. And I'll start to see what I get. Oh, that was good. Um, so then I can place flags in some of the places where I see that. Go back to clearing out mines. And so as I go, oh, yep, click the wrong one there. But uh, but I could always undo and keep going, but I, I won't. But lots of fun to build it. And as I built it, I learned a lot about how parameter actions work, how it can build out these strings that, that append. And you might think, well, Minesweeper is not something that you ever want to build in Tableau. It's, uh, it's not all that useful. But check out what Lindsay Poulter is doing with parameter actions. If she knows how to uh, take these things and make them very practical. So she's done everything from building out calendars where you can select multiple dates and uh, and see the rest of the dashboard update based on that. And it's same sort of uh, same sort of idea that she's building out these strings that uh, that you can then do some incredible things with and create a very rich user experience beyond just the fun of a game. It has a lot of practical application as well. All right, so very quickly, what to do with new features when you find them? Well, uh, first, use them. Uh, you know, here's an example of uh, these map layers uh, and vector maps, the smooth zooming in and out on the map. Uh, I don't even use these as much as I should, but they're all there and they've been there for a long time in Tableau, all the way zooming down even to uh, building footprints. Um, just select uh, from the menu map and then map layers, and there are all kinds of possibilities there uh, besides just the default. Play with the new features, push the limits, see what you can do. Maybe it's building games, maybe it's building a better business dashboard. Uh, there are all kinds of fun things that you can do and practical things as well. And then provide feedback to the developers. So especially if you're part of that pre-release program, 
uh, you'll be invited to share feedback to the developers. Tell them what's working, what's not working, and uh, and what you would like to see differently than uh, than maybe the way that they've designed it initially. Uh, this is this is the chance to uh, to give them that feedback and potentially even influence their decisions. Uh, and then submit new ideas. Uh, we talked about the forums before, but one of the places on the forums is called Ideas, and there you can actually write up an idea. So maybe a, maybe a feature gives you an idea. You think, well, I like how it does this, but I wish it could also do this other thing, or I wish there was an additional feature for this. Uh, you can submit your ideas there. You can also vote for other ideas and let the developers know what your priorities are and what their priorities hopefully should be. So that's a great opportunity for that. You never know, you might end up influencing the next generation of Tableau. We have just a few minutes for, uh, for some Q and A. Uh, so if you've got a question, feel free to type it into the, uh, the chat window there, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the question window. And we'll, uh, we'll take a look and see if there are any questions. So someone asked about Tableau Server. So I didn't have any, uh, any specifics on Tableau Server, but absolutely there are tons of new features for Tableau Server. In fact, the entire data management add-on uh, is an entire topic of itself, uh, but there are all kinds of new features for Tableau Server, and they continue to build that out as well. So check out those release notes. All right, and then uh, and then another question about the animations. Do they work on Tableau Server? So yes, when it's released, they have said that the animations will work fully on Tableau Server, Tableau Online, Tableau Public. Uh, so it, it's 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 really kind of cool. In fact, that's one of the things that's been asked for for a long time is just make the pages shelf work. Well, they took it, they made the animations even better, and now it will work uh, uh, on that. A question about metrics. Uh, so metrics were pre were previewed at Tableau conference, uh, the devs on stage, and they showed the idea that you could take any viz and fairly effortlessly turn it into a simple metric, uh, just a few clicks, and your timeline of revenue now becomes a, a metric that you can see day by day and you can even subscribe to it on mobile and you can look at it as it updates and even interact with it. Uh, and all very easy to create, very easy to work with. Uh, so my thoughts are is that it's gonna be a great feature, especially for the, for the executives and the business users who just need to track a few things that are vitally important and we used to have to build out entire dashboards or or think through how we wanted to display it. I think it's going to cut down a lot on the on the time that it takes to get those kind of answers. So I'm I'm really excited about metrics. All right, I don't see any other questions, and we're pretty much at time. But I thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, it's been a pleasure being with you, and I look forward to additional webinars as we go into the new year. We're going to set forth a plan, and we'll think through what's going to help you the most, and definitely let us know if you have any feedback or thoughts about webinars that you'd like to see. We're excited about that. In fact, next week at the same time, Bridget Cogley, my uh, my colleague and, uh, and fellow Zen Master, she will be presenting on... Uh, on data literacy. And so that's a term that I had not heard uh, ever until about a year ago, I started hearing it. And all of a sudden it's become the hottest new thing and I need to learn more about it. Uh, so I'm excited to, uh, to find out what she's learned. She did a presentation to executives at the executive track at Tableau Conference, all about data literacy. So I'm excited about that one. Definitely register for that one if you have not and we'll also look forward to the new year together. Thank you so much again. Have a great day.